Thank you, Whitney. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webcast today on how to eliminate the mainframe security gap. My name is Yvonne Wheaton, and I'm in the marketing department of Software Diversified Services. I'll be your moderator today. I'll be discussing SIM today, or Security Information and Event Management, and provide some things to think about as to where we are in the big wide world of the enterprise SIM. As I mentioned, I'm in the marketing department. I have over 30 years in IT, both in system shops and enterprise vendor environments. Colin will discuss SIM agent for ZOS and how you can use alerts and reveal pertinent events. He'll provide a demo to show you captured events and tracking using vital signs SIM agent for ZOS. Colin is a senior systems engineer here at STS. He has over 25 years experience as a customer at a large bank as their network systems programmer responsible for network transfer and security file solutions. He's been at SDS for over eight years now, focused on network software solutions and security solutions. Following Colin, we'll have a Q&A session. Okay, so give me a few minutes of your time and let me tell you about SDS. SDS, or Software Diversified Services, has been providing mainframe solutions to the market for over 35 years. Our headquarters are located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. SDS now supports over 20 ZOS, MVS, VSE, and VM mainframe systems products. Our flagship products are dedicated to network management, security solutions, and performance solutions. We're a leading provider of enterprise infrastructure software for multiple platforms with a 35-year history of delivering award-winning support and customer-centric IT infrastructure solutions. We have over 1,000 licensed customers worldwide, including global 500 companies, and over the years, we've developed more product solutions for the distributed environment. We've added to our mainframe product line and we've partnered with subject matter experts for effective software solutions. Our development staff is continually providing updates and enhancements to our products, keeping STS abreast of marketing changes and trends. We're invested in our security portfolio and Vital Signs Seam Agent for ZOS is a part of that. You can stay connected with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and our blog for tips, ideas, and white papers. We'll be talking today about SIM, or Security Information and Event Management, and how the mainframe is a part of today's enterprise SIM solution. SIM consists of two parts, basically. There's the event information processor for the system or enterprise, such as the SIM agent for ZOS, then there's the reporting of the events and information. This can be done with products such as QRadar, Splunk, HP ArcSight, and so on. Your event processor captures the data or events, and your reporting tool then provides access to the information. In the case of the event processing, the SIM agent auto formats event messages in real time as events are happening from software access points such as RACF, CA Top Secret, DB2, CICS, TCP IP, for example, again, all in real time. These event types could be picked up as a password violation, unauthorized data access, or unauthorized login. The unauthorized data access could be a violation from an authorized user going out of bounds. Maybe someone's trying to access data they don't have the authority to access, or maybe it's an honest mistake. If you're tracking these areas, you'll be able to make that assessment and validate the access. Colin will go into more detail into specific events and capture information areas later in the presentation. An enterprise-wide system, you not only have a Linux and Unix and Windows and other areas of potential input to your SIM, but we also need to look at the ZOS mainframe as a part of that mix. This means that your mainframe systems programmer works along with your security and audit staff to make sure your systems are secure, not only from compliance, but also for data integrity. Companies have gone out of business when their data could not be trusted to be accurate. Ponemon 2016 talks about the time to identify and also the time to contain. It was highest for malicious and criminal attacks. 229 days for a time to identify and 82 days for time to contain, but much lower for data breaches caused by human error, 162 days and 59 days respectively. 2015 National Cybersecurity Alliance found that 60% of small businesses 
are unable to sustain their business over six months after a cyber attack. Your SIM solution could look something like this. All your points of data collection feeding into your SIM to provide a more rounded, robust solution that would include the mainframe. In our data world, we can have input from so many sources and access points. Printers, users logging on or logging off, the internet, emails, financial data, and health data. Information flows through many businesses in an alarming, ever-increasing flow of data both in and out of corporations today. To avoid information overload and alarming false positives to become white noise, you need to have your data parsed and sorted so that only the relevant data is passed along. The confusion arises when we're looking for what access points could have potential negative impact to our systems. This is where a real-time information and event processor can cut through the chatter to fine-tune the flow of data and focus on what is pertinent and relevant. Sim Agent for ZeroS can narrow down your massive amounts of information to only the areas your business needs dictate that you select to focus and report on. You need to be able to monitor and investigate your enterprise in real time. Without question, your mainframe system has to be a part of your SIM solution. Get familiar with your access and data flow to lessen your vulnerability of a data breach. You need to find that data breach now in real time, whether intended or accidental. Do you know when authorized users are going out of bounds? The mainframe is going away. How many times have I heard that? Well, hackers today are focused more on the mainframe and providing education. Why not? It's the next frontier for the curious and adventure seeking. A horizon that's always claimed to be non-penetrable. But can we afford to ignore the signs? At DEF CON 2015 by Chad Rickensrud or Biggie Smalls and Phil Young or Soldier of Fortune, as they're known, provided a presentation called Security Necromancy, Further Adventures in Mainframe Hacking, where they showed that the availability of most of the information they needed was on the internet for their mainframe research. At DerbyCon 2015 presentation by Chad Rickensrud called Learning Mainframe Hacking, Where Did All My Free Time Go? The description in the presentation starts out, do you like a good puzzle? Recently, Chad gave a class entitled Evil Mainframe Beginner ZOS Penetration Testing. In both the presentation and the class, they point out that if you can hack the, in the distributed world, to some extent, your talents can be ported to the mainframe world with a few modifications. Here's a partial list of what was being taught at the Beginner ZOS Penetration class, testing class. As you can see, this pretty much covers what you want to know to get educated on a mainframe structure and potential vulnerable areas. I don't need to read this entire list to you, and you can find it um, just by doing an internet search. You can find the entire class listed, but a few areas that I'm sure you recognize are TCP, IP, RACF, CICS, and FTP exploit. Who's to say who attended the class or others like it and what their intentions were? Let's hope for the best, but plan and prepare for whatever may come across our path. Colin will be going into more specifics of where the SIM agent can identify your traffic alerts and patterns in these software areas and others. Why do hackers hack? It's a question that has many answers depending on the hacker. Possibly fame, fortune, maybe an intellectual challenge, or as we're seeing today, political arenas. In the best scenarios, it is the curious that are looking for a challenge. It is those people that can help us find the vulnerabilities and use their knowledge to educate others to provide intelligence to the security community to stop harmful hacking. So the key is to get to know your system and find out if your trigger is caused by a real mistake or a breach, either internal or external. You may have noticed, as I have, the phrase from a 1995 movie, The Hackers, is being used again today. The phrase, Hack the Gibson, from the 1995 movie, Hackers, may be old, but it's come back into play today in the hacker world. The meaning of the phrase, Hack the Gibson, is the process of using the home computer and the internet connection to infiltrate and copy the information from found in a supercomputer, or as they refer to, a Gibson. 
There's an overwhelming amount of data to process, all the things to track and worry about, systems, access, compliance. Making your event processor the key to alerting adds clarity to the confusion. It's my pleasure to hand the presentation over to Colin Vanderos. He'll provide much more information on making sense and providing focus of all the masses of data flow into your system and how it can be marked for concern using SIM agent for ZOS. Colin? Thank you, Ivan, and welcome to everyone. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. So here's the agenda for my portion of today's presentation. I'll be providing you with an overview of the Vital Science Sim Agent for ZOS product. For those of you that do not know, the product has recently been acquired by Software Diversified Services. Uh, you can visit our website, so stsusa.com, and you can find out more information about this recent acquisition. But the product was formerly known as Smart or Security Monitor Real-Time and that is now being rebranded under the Vital Signs uh, stable and it is called Vital Signs Sim Agent for ZOS. So I'll be discussing the features of Vital Signs Sim Agent, then talking about the problems, uh, what problems does the Vital Signs Sim Agent uh, solve, uh, talk about the SMF events and filtering, so we're going to give you an idea of what events you can record and also the right to operator messages that can be uh, captured by the SIM agent and sent to your enterprise SIM. Also provide you with a feel for uh, or a baseline. Uh, we've got some good recommendations as to what events you should monitor out of the gates. Obviously it's not a one size foot, fits all but we can give you a good starting point and these are some of the records that we can recommend you can monitor when you implement this product and I'll get to that when we talk about the events and filtering. And then lastly, give you a live demo. So I have a, a few agents installed here on the STS, a few STS LPARs, and I'll be sending these events to, to Curator. I also have a syslog monitor installed on my laptop. And uh, the reason why I have that installed is just to show you that when I do generate some events, whether it's an SMF event or a right to operator message, as the event occurs on ZOS, immediately it pops up on my syslog server. So I'll be showing you that when I do the live demonstration. Okay, so let's talk about some of the features of the product. Firstly, it works along with your SAF product. and uh, We don't really care what SAF product you have installed, whether it's RACF, ACF2 or Top Secret. The product supports all three and you can also have different agents configured for different SAF products. So an example might be perhaps you have a data center in Chicago that's running RACF and you have a data center in Los Angeles that's running ACF2. That is no problem. You can just configure the agent uh, for whatever SAF product is running on that host or that LPAR. It uses intelligent mining from several different sources. It can also monitor for internal activity for patterns of abuse. So if something nefarious is happening on your network, perhaps somebody's, uh, you know, there's a ping or denial service of attack, that is certainly something that the product can pick on, pick up on. It also supports all of the operating systems. So we're already uh, 2.1 compliant, and there's already plans to make sure that we're compliant with ZOS 2.2 when it is made available. Also, if you have the requirement to monitor uh, US events logged in USS that is uh, supported. I know there's a lot of products out there that exploit USS or run in the USS in environment. Uh, and there's also pretty powerful commands that people can use in the USS environment. So those can be monitored and logged and also sent to your enterprise sim. The syslog agent, uh, those are console messages and they they in real time, which I said I'll show, I'll illustrate later. Uh, that does not use SMF for the console messages. And then the vital sign, some agents include syslog and SMF and they share the same base code. So um, this is some of the features of the product. The agents can use different SAF products and different LPARs, which I mentioned already and it monitors activity within that LPAR. So when you install our product, it's running on your mainframe. We don't really care what enterprise SIM you have in installed. 
Uh, it could be Splunk, it could be Logarithm, it could be the IBM Curator, any one of those are supported. We make sure we send the events in the right format depending on what enterprise sim you are using. It has a TSO rule generator, so when the product is up and running, you can log on to this ISPF interface. You can then uh, customize it so you can enable what records should be monitored and what records you don't want monitored any longer. And in customer environments where perhaps you've got 10, 15 LPARs and you want to implement these rules and you don't want to go through the ISPF panels, you can use the batch rule generator and then you can apply all of those rules in a batch format. Then there's the batch feed of SMF records. So I know a lot of customers out there where ZOS hasn't been included as part of their SIM strategy and they're writing away these SMF records on a daily basis every hour archiving these records. Perhaps now you consider going down this path and implement, implementing a ZOS agent or to monitor events from ZOS and sending it to your enterprise SIM. But some of those SMF records, perhaps from a year or a couple of months ago, what you can actually do is you can take those SMF records, run it through our batch feed, and you can recover those events from those archived SMF uh, from those ar archived SMF records. So that's that's something really nice. You know, if you don't know what happened a year or two ago, simply feed those events into uh, our product, and we will then be able to provide you visibility on that. And that's assuming that you have the correct you had the correct SMF records logged back then. These alerts, they delivered from the mainframe agent to a UDP SIM or IDS. Okay, moving along, what problems does the vital sign SIM agent solve? For those of you folks that uh, work with SMF and run SMF reports, I'm sure you're pretty familiar with the sys1.man files. Uh, they may be o over 32K in length. Uh, they're also in binary format. Sometimes you have to dump the SMF records first and then you'll be able to run uh, batch reports against them or you know depending on what you want to do. But they can be pretty cumbersome to work with. With our product, these SMF records, they're all in real time. Uh, our subsystem interface captures them and you can you know report on these SMF events immediately. So it, it solves that cumbersome problem that you have dumping SMF records and running reports against them and bear in mind this is all in real time. Also console messages, those write to operator messages, some of them can be pretty important. Uh, sometimes they scroll off the tunnels and you know it's really faster than can be read so that's probably not the most ideal place for folks to keep control or monitor what's happening to those write to operator messages and as we know console logs they seldom reviewed for security compliance and for auditing it improves the efficacy of RACF, ACF2 and top secret and also non-security SMF types and console messages and it is truly a real time uh, it delivers these events in real time and I'll show you that when I get to the live demo we use state-of-the-art capture for the alerts and for those folks that are running DB2, we can also track those DB2 audited events. And also, it has some application programming interfaces which produces customized events. So it is vital signs some agent enables the extension of mainframe console messages and write to, write to operator messages to be routed to the external log for all those retention servers. It easily integrates with your centralized activities within the enterprise sim and it is a cost effective solution to monitor IBM ZOS so in, to include IBM ZOS as part of that enterprise wide security program. Where does the vital sign sim agent get uh, or how does it how does it work where does it get the information from firstly we can harvest the information we show on the product from SMF records and I'll get to that when we talk about the filtering of the product. Also we get information from the DB2 audit SMF records and lastly from the right to operator messages or right to operator console messages. The vital signs some agent SMF exits they capture events in real time 
and all of the right to operate the messages for an ALPA enters the vital sensor agent supplied sub into, uh, subsystem interface. So this is initialized automatically when the agent comes up. You'll see there's a message that gets kicked off uh, once you've installed the product that the subsystem has initialized. And there's a message that pops up saying open for business that tells you that the product is ready for use and it's now monitoring or any SMF events that you got turned on or right to operate the messages that you want uh, captured, those will then be automatically sent to your, auto to your enterprise sim. So it runs as a started task on all of the LPARs that you want um, visibility on. So it also uses the industry standard UDP, so uh, uh, port 514 I think it is, and for those customers that have more than one in for more than one sim you know probably for resilience and redundancy purposes you can configure the product to send to multiple destinations so uh, there's two IP addresses and you can also specify the port numbers and also perhaps one of them is using the IBM leaf format and perhaps the other one is using the set format you can configure that it is totally customizable in the product you can also elect to write information to DASD and also user SMF records are supported. And you can configure to write security messages on the syslog and some monitor of your of your of your choice, which I mentioned previously. There are different formats that um, the vital sign sim agent uh, supports. One of them is the, the default, which everyone knows about, is the syslog. So that's the standard syslog header and the format, and that's the default. Then there's also the SEF format, the common event format. Um, just to let everyone know that's on the webinar today that we have, the product has done a lot of work on uh, certifying, making sure that uh, we certify to work with QRadar and ArcSight. So uh, if you have those, IBM and um, HP have, we've been certified for those, but we support the SEF format and we also support the LEAF format. So for those of folks on the call today that use IBM Curator, you're pretty familiar with the log event extended format uh, that has been certified and we are passing those events in the correct format to the IBM Curator. For those folks that want to make use of the application program interfaces, uh, there's the batch API and also a Kix API. I mentioned this once before, batch API, you could possibly think of exploiting it perhaps you running in your batch run you want to be made aware of certain conditions or certain things that happen in your batch run maybe any deposit over a certain amount maybe over ten thousand uh, dollars you can write or configure the API to send those events to your enterprise sim so that information will be contained in your enterprise sim all right let's talk a little bit about the vital signs sim agent and the filtering so most of you on the call today are probably ZOS folks you understand the mainframe and you know how SMF works and we all know there is a lot of SMF records that can be enabled and there's an abundance of information in those SMF records so out of the gates if you try to process the vast amount of data coming from SMF it would be literally like trying to drink from a fire hose and that's obviously not the best way to go about things we have a good feel for what customers want to monitor we've got a nice baseline a nice starting point that we can help customers with so we can say to you these are the records that we think is important and when you install the product you enable those it'll probably be a process where you gradually turn on some events and turn off I don't think it's a one-size-fits-all but we can assist you in getting a good baseline and making sure that you monitor the records that in our experience we think is really important. One thing to remember when you do go, do go about performing this exercise is you do not want to do this in isolation. So you wouldn't want just your systems programmer uh, or your security guide to configure or determine what important or what records are important to be sent to your enterprise sim you probably familiar with the term segregation of duties or separation of duties this would be a team effort you would probably have to get your network guys involved your security guys uh, operations team everybody sit down and you evaluate 
and say what is important to you, what records you want to turn on. But we have a nice uh, Excel spreadsheet that we can share with you and uh, that will give you a good insight as to what events we think is important and what you should be turning on. So to give you an idea of what we can collect and uh, this is just an uh, idea, I'm not going to go through all of them. As you can see, there's a bunch of SMF types that uh, we report on. Perhaps the SMF 17 is of importance to you. Do you know, want to know any time a data set is deleted or scratched or renaming of data sets? Perhaps your starter tasks, you know, when, when they come down or when they come up, that could be information that you want logged and sent to your enterprise some, you know, maybe in a year's time or two years time, there's some unfortunate incident you have to go back and determine what happened that information will be available on your enterprise sim. then the termination of TSO sessions that's the record type 32 uh, VCM opens so anytime a VCM file is opened or there's updates to it you can log those enable records type 62 Record type 80, everybody is familiar with those so that's the rack of security events and, and there's so much to enable here um, I'm sure the RACF guys, everybody has their preference or each site will have some sort of preference as to what they deem is important. Uh, but as you can see, there's a lot to, that you can choose from and we can certainly help you uh, to turn on or what we think is the correct records to monitor once you get going or once you have the product installed. Then something new that has been added since 0 is 2.2. Um, there is changes anytime changes to the APF authorized library uh, maybe you want to be made aware of that we all know that auditors want to know what libraries are included in your uh, the APF library uh, so if, if you want to be made aware of it or see you know what any changes to that APF list uh, that is something that is new with zero 2.2 and we can report on those record types as well type 90 uh, 92 that would be for your uh, open MVS or the USS world and you, there's a bunch of commands that uh, are pretty powerful like the change ownership command the change mod command uh, those are ones that you can have logged and obviously keep uh, have some sort of reference point if you do want to go back and determine what somebody did then there's the 102s which would be the DB2 uh, audit classes so slog D, the 109s, 119s, uh, this could be important. Maybe you want to just log information every time an FTP transfer occurs and somebody stores a file or gets a file. So that information can be sent automatically to your SIM. It'll be logged there. Uh, remember the SIM, these are logs, they, they cannot be altered. It's forever there. And if you're going to include ZOS is part of your SIM strategy. You're going to have that complete picture of all of the different environments. And the nice thing about it is it is all in one central location. So there's the, some of the top, type 119 records and uh, some of them that in, gets included with them. So being a network guy, I really like the 119. I know a few of our products do cut the SMF 119 records as well. And I just thought I'd show uh, for folks on the call that use top secret. There's some of the events uh, and you can see we certainly have some good samples for top secret and ACF2 as well. And we can help you with those. Um, and here you can see some of the ACF2 events that you can have logged as well. So to wrap it up before I get to the live demo, these are some of the events that you can report on from a zero's point of view. So the right to operate the message console, the RACF or whatever your SAF securities, TSO, CICS, DB2, all these are running on the IBM mainframe and now you can enable these records. The SIM agent will capture them and forward them off to your enterprise SIM, whether it's ArcSight, Curator, doesn't really matter. We can forward those events and you'll have that information in the centralized location. Then to put, uh, put it all into perspective, the big picture, the mainframe is just going to be another repository or just another way, another feeder to the enterprise sim. So your Windows server, you probably find in your, in your uh, distributed environment, most folks have a sim implemented already. You know, Windows, Linux, uh, switches and routers, they're all there. Uh, but what we have found in some of our conversations with customers, 
um, ZOS has, hasn't been included as part of that ZOS strategy. So people are obviously becoming aware, as Ivan, point, uh, Ivan pointed out in her portion of the demonstration, you know, even although mainframes are pretty secure, they've been around for a very long time, uh, Rackif does a pretty good job about securing uh, access to certain files and that. But it certainly seems recently there has been a lot of threats. We, if you just Google, go to Google and you'll see, you know, even on YouTube, there's videos these days that talk about how to hack a mainframe. Um, Google John the Ripper, that's also some interesting information about Rackif, uh, how information that can be used to get into Rackif and the mainframe. But suffice to say, the question I have for you today is if you do have a, a sim already and your distributed environment is using it, why not consider including the mainframe or ZOS as part of your sim strategy? So just piggyback onto that, install this agent, and um, you will then get all of these events sent to your enterprise sim. What we have found in talking to our customers, it seems to be more from a compliance point of view. People are making sure they're compliant and these events are being sent to the enterprise sim. So let's get to the live demonstration. I'm going to switch out of the PowerPoint presentation and log into QRadar, which is the enterprise sim that we have installed here on the SDS, uh, one of our SDS uh, servers. While that's going, I'm going to switch to TSO and let's just see which one I have here. This is on one of my LPARs. I've actually gone into the starter task. This is the starter task, the actual vital sign some agent, and there you can see the name of it. Um, I'm going to go to the bottom and I just want to point out something to you. In my testing, there's an operand that you can turn on. And what this operand does is anytime an SMF event gets written or there's a right to operate a message uh, being generated by the SIM product or vital sign SIM product, uh, in my testing, I want to make sure that, hey, am I actually sending these events out? Are they being delivered to my enterprise SIM? You know, how do I know that? And just by writing out this message, it's called the right to operate the con message. This shows any events that are being written out or being sent to my enterprise sim. So looks like one occurred at 1418 today. Uh, looks like one of our agents. So let's go about generating some right to operator messages and some ev events. So I've gone to sys1.palmlive. I do believe I do not have access to this. So I'm going to try and create a member here and let's save that. And before I hit the save button, I want to show you the real-time nature of this product. So I'm going to get that ICH408i message immediately after trying hitting the save button here. There you can see ICH, um, that's the RACF message. I don't have access to Palm Lab. And if I go to my syslog server, and I'm, I'm just doing this to illustrate the real-time nature of the product, there you can see immediately it popped up. It said, I, my user ID was not allowed to update sys1.palmlive insufficient access authority and now you can see that this product is truly a real-time monitor. It's not near time as the event occurred. I, I saw this on my uh, syslog monitor. So this is just a syslog monitor I've got going. I just want to show you this um, to illustrate the real-time nature of the product. So I'm going to close that off and I'm going to can out of this and I'm going to switch sessions go to another Alpa and here you can see we've got a lot of activity this is one of our busier Alpas it looks like there's a bunch of SMF records being written out and I'm going to try and generate I've gone into let's go back I'm in RACF I'm going to go to option 7 and try and generate a digital certificate and the generated and here you can see the message came along I'm not authorized to issue the rack desert command again if I look in the starter task there you can see the message popped up immediately that says that the message was sent off to my enterprise sim so this agent is configured to send messages uh, to QRadar and to my log manager which is on my laptop so I'm going to go to QRadar I've logged on to Curator. Let me just make some more real estate here. And bear in mind, I'm only getting events from 
curator uh, from the ZOS, uh, my ZOS system. So I have a number of LPARs reporting to this. I don't have any routers, firewalls, or anything reporting to this one. Uh, and let's click on the log activity so we can go and examine some of the records that was written uh, and also that rack t -cert command. So there's a lot of messages that's coming up here that might not be relevant to what I want to view. Let's click on the add filter operand and I want to go and I want to set up a a filter. In this particular case, let's set it up for log source group. So this is a function on the sim itself and see, we're saying it's equals. Uh, this is what's so nice about the sim is all of the information is really available. You can set up filters, you can set up triggers and now I've filtered it so that it only shows ZOS events or any activity coming from the Alpars in my environment. Uh, let's change it. Let's go for the last 15 minutes. So that'll just update that for me. And I also have the option of viewing the information uh, differently. So over the last 15 minutes there you can see the trend. Looks like um, I've got some canned stuff going in the background but I, that was generated from my 014 Alpar. But let's change that and let's change the default display. Let's change it to username and let's get a feel for what is occurring from a username point of view. So while that loads up, here you can see there's a bunch of users logged on the uh, STS LPARs. Looks like there's been a few violations and my user ID is bcbr1 and you can see bdjm1 looks like he was doing a bunch of things. So if I go down to bcvr1, that's the IP address of my agent that is running and it looks like there was multiple events for. So I can click on that, it opens up a new window and now this window will give me more detail about this one event that occurred on my enterprise sim. In this case it is curator. So it looks like there's the rack tcert command. I can double click on that, uh, opens up another window and now some more detail about what this user was trying to do. In my case it's my user ID and I tried to generate a RACF digital certificate which I was not allowed to. So there you can see rack t -cert command, insufficient authority, the log source, the date and time and the category is uh, access denied, source IP address and the username. I can even go in more detail, drill down one more level and get some additional information about this event. So there you can see access denied and the date and time, all of this good information about this event. So truly in real time, um, getting back to the filtering of it, obviously you can decide what's important to you, we can help you with this, but this is from a compliance point of view. If something did ever happen on your, your mainframe, let's assume you had that unlikely or something happened where you uh, you need to go back and investigate what occurred on your system. This events that you turn on on the vital signs sim agent, they can be logged in your enterprise sim. So you know, I was working with a customer recently. I found it pretty strange. Uh, well, not strange, but that was obviously his requirement. He work he was installed the product. Uh, we offered to go on site and work with the customer and help him get the product installed. And he told me that the product was installed. It was just another checkbox item. He's compliant. So if anything does happen, he's logging the correct event. So it might not be the most elegant way of looking at it, but he achieved what was required from him to make sure that he's compliant and logging the ZOS events. It can be used for more than just logging. I mean, if something does happen, somebody accesses your payroll file, you can set up triggers and events on the actual SIM box to escalate it and maybe send emails out or you know let people know that somebody tried to access a file that they weren't authorized to do. Let's try doing one more display. Let's go with the low levels category and show you some of the information that the SIM provides. Bear in mind, this is uh, uh, IBM Curator, so all, all of them work differently. Uh, we're in the process of installing, uh, while well, we're looking at installing another product as well, which we can use in our demos. But here you can see some of the information. Looks like there's some events that are unknown that were not mapped yet. So uh, some customization still needs to be completed on the box. And uh, one last one that I can show you. Uh, remember I went for the last 15 minutes. We can go and say maybe show us from a destination IP. So there's a number of ways to do this. 
I also have that filter in place. I can clear that filter or I can use a quick filter and I can just put an IP address in there, for example. It'll then bring up information related to that IP address. So all real nice information, easy to use um, from a vital sign sim agent point of view. It's a matter of you configure, configuring the, the records and events you want forwarded to your enterprise sim and they'll be logged there. And if it's compliance you're after, you certainly will be able to tick that particular checkbox. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up now. I'm going to go back to my presentation. In fact, um, I'm going to hand it over to Ivan. And Ivan, take it over. And uh, thank you everybody for your time. Uh, we look forward to hearing back from you. Thanks.